2023 was a stacked year. What with Scorsese, Michael Mann, Ridley Scott, David Fincher, and Christopher Nolan all set to release a film in the same year. While I've yet to watch some heavy hitters like Man's Ferrari, fan favorite Poor Things, surprise hit Godzilla Minus One, and the Dark Horse of the Year, the zone of interest, the year has still not disappointed. Here are my top 15 of the year so far. Coming in at number 15, we have May, December, one of the last films to make the list. And truthfully, it's a really interesting, loosely based on a true story movie with two wonderful performances from the two women on the screen right now. And and quite frankly, Julianne Moore, I think, takes the cake. Um as like the best performance but even the top or the main three people in this cast the husband the actress and the actual wife characters in this movie are all really good and make this film one of the best of the year and while we're here and while we're talking i would like to say um despite the fact that poor things and the likes are not on this video. They are going to be on a Oscar video later in the year as I discuss what I think is going to win the best movies as well. Best picture, best actress, actor, all of that while having seen a lot of the movies that I covered up front. So you're going to want to subscribe so that you don't miss it. And I very much appreciate it. Coming in at number 14 is none other than Greta Gerwig's Barbie, which is only one of two films to gross over a billion in the year, with the Super Mario movie being slightly behind Barbie in terms of gross, but also well over a billion in its own right. Gerwig was able to take the Barbie story and create something that was quirky, fun, and had heart. While I think the film did well to get across a lot of its themes, it did tend to spell a lot of it out for the audience, and I give it a 3.5 out of 5. And I should mention, for May-December, same goes. 3.5 out of 5, in my opinion. Next, we have Saltburn at number 13, starring Barry Keegan or Kogan, you be the judge, and Jacob Allardy, whom both performed very well. This film has some very gross moments sprinkled in there for any potential viewers wanting to watch, which did not limit my enjoyment, but should be noted. Akin to Barbie, the film goes a little too far in explaining elements of the movie that are probably best left unspoken, with the ending being the sole offender of this type of over explanation despite a less than solid ending because of how great the buildup was i still really enjoyed this movie and gave it a 3.5 out of 5 number 12 sees another not another sees bradley cooper's maestro this film rating on letterbox is below mine but it's so high for me because of the lead performance by bradley cooper and the music that complements the really interesting story of leonard bernstein i can see a lot of the complaints made about this movie but quite frankly i really enjoyed it i gave this a 3.5 out of 5 as well Next, we have Napoleon at number 11. Uh, this is another film where the consensus is lower than my ranking with Ridley Scott's Napoleon. I think the film gets flack because there is seemingly a narrative pulling this film in two separate directions. A thought I had actually mentioned in my review after watching this in theaters. In ruminating about this film, I've come back around to thinking the personal aspects 
are all there to show the humanity of a historical figure that we often look upon as larger than life. The blunders in both his personal life and professional life all seek to show that he was a person and gives us a more intimate view than what we, or I should say, I was expecting coming in. Whereas I was originally disappointed with Phoenix's performance, my change in perspective now has me feeling it's one of the best of the year. And I give this a 3.5 out of 5. Cracking the top 10, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 at number 10. Not only does this film utilize CGI to do some wicked cool sequences and shots that would otherwise be very difficult to achieve, but it, est- it establishes an emotional background that rivals any that the trilogy has done so far. It has great humor and a great story overall. And I give this a 4 out of 5. Number 9, we have Blackberry. We should all give it up to the Golden God, Glenn Howerton, for a really great performance in this one as he keeps the momentum high throughout the entire story. Not only is the real-life story really interesting, but the character arcs of our two main characters are terrific. I give Blackberry a 4 out of 5 as well. Marvel's back on the list at number 8 with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in a colorful and cool entry into the series. When I saw the original animated Spider-Man film, I thought that the animation style was breathtaking, and that feeling didn't change after watching this. This film does well to set up a really climactic ending in the third of the series. And I give this a 4 out of 5 as well. Number 7, Bo is Afraid, tells a story unlike anything else in 2023. Joaquin Phoenix is absolutely stellar as the lead performer in an absolute fever dream and insane narrative. While this isn't Ari Aster's best work, in my opinion, what with Midsummer and Hereditary on his resume, but it shows how far he is willing to push a story creatively. And quite frankly, I really appreciate that. And I actually think it spells really well for his career moving forward. I give this film a 4 out of 5 as well. Number 6, Past Lives, is a romance movie I can really boogie to. Not only do all the main characters get room to breathe, they too also have weight throughout the story. I think the way this film plays with its main theme is gnarly, And I really, really like this film's ending. Four out of five for me. Into the top five is David Fincher's The Killer. Yes, I may be too high on this film. According to my my dad, this was a slog to get through. But I found much in this film to be rewarding. And if you don't like this film, you're dead to me. Of course, I'm joking, but I really enjoyed Fassbender's performance and thought the monotony that we experience early on to have a payoff as our main character begins to break this in his quest for revenge. I give the killer a four out of five. Next, one of the heavy hitters of the year. Number four, Killers of the Flower Moon. A film I'm probably too low on, rating-wise, as over time I've continued to like this more and more. Leonardo embodies a character who has very complex motivations and depicts these tremendously in his performance, which is possibly, in my opinion, going to give him a second Oscar. And, and I would go as far to say deservedly. De Niro and Gladstone also do terrific in this film, which has a really deep and interesting narrative that 
the more I think about, the more I appreciate, which I always find to be the mark of a really great movie and maybe even a masterpiece. But as of now, I have it as a four out of five. Into the top three, we have number three, The Holdovers, which is one of the most heartfelt films of all of 2023. And last year for me, it was everything, everywhere, all at once is like the most heartfelt film. And I got a very similar feel, feel for, for how emotionally in touch and resonant The Holdovers was. It has a terrific performance from Paul Giamatti as well, which is really must see. If The Holdovers isn't on your watch list yet, it really should be with its great humor and wonderful range of emotions. I give The Holdovers a 4.5 out of 5. Number two, Anatomy of a Fall is the success story where other films on this list have failed. Where Saltburn and Barbie maybe unveiled too much Anatomy of a Fall plays things close to the vest and carefully reveals information just when we need it. This is possibly the best script of 2023 and clearly one of my favorites. A 4.5 out of 5. With number one being possibly no surprise for y'all, Oppenheimer. A film that had the best pacing and editing of the year for my money. Cillian Murphy is great as the title character, and the film feels very profound in its magnitude. Oppenheimer was a cinematic experience that truly trumped all others. Guys, I appreciate you joining me on this video. I really hope you liked it, and subscribe so that you don't miss anything coming up. And I'll catch you on the flippity floop. Bye, y'all.